When making a t-shirt quilt, we are sometimes able to differentiate the quilt block size to match the graphics. For example, this would be a smaller quilt block size than maybe this. But sometimes we need the quilt blocks to be comparable in size or we end up with a quilt block that is much larger than the image or the decal. That's not an issue and it looks great in a t-shirt quilt, but sometimes we want to center that decal. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to center the decal for your quilt block. Hi, I'm Julie Patterson of JCT Quilting and I want to help you turn your memories into quilted treasures. When making a mosaic or collage style t-shirt quilt, I will often determine the block size based on the size of the image, leaving about half an inch around the image. So this would be a large block, and then this would be a small block. However, in this particular case for this quilt, the client and I decided to do consistent quilt blocks for every item, which means this is going to be the same quilt block size as this. Sometimes when I do this, I leave it as is and just leave all this space, which ends up looking great once it's quilted. And sometimes I think it would look better to center the image. In this case, for this quilt, I'm going to center the image. It can also happen when working with something like this. This is a large decal, but it's definitely sitting higher, closer to the top, and not centered vertically. So, in this video, I'm going to show you how I centered this image vertically. It's already centered horizontally for the quilt block size that I'll be using. And how do I center a small image both vertically, up, down, and horizontally? Let's get started. First, I need to prepare my shirts for stabilizing just as I would with any other t-shirt quilt. In this case, I need the front and the back of the shirt, so I carefully use my rotary blade up both sides, trimming very close to the edge, and then I'll separate the front from the back by cutting along the top of the shirt, set aside the back for later, and I'll work with the front. Now I'll do the same for the other shirt. In this case, I only need the front, but I still want to be careful while cutting and preparing the shirt to be stabilized. Because I'm going to be piecing these shirts before using them in the quilt block, I will need extra stabilizer to account for the seam allowance and just the overage just so that I make sure I have enough of the shirt. So I'm going to trim these wider and taller than I normally would to allow for that flexibility. Now it's stabilized, it's time to start cutting. Okay, well this is approximately five by four. Uh, it's where I would normally center it to leave a little bit of room around it. And I need it to be 14 and a half by 16 and a half. So if it's four tall and I need it to be 16 and a half, I'm gonna round and say 17. I might even round even more and say 18 just to give myself enough for salvage. So I need 18. I have four, I have 14 left. Divide that in half. So I need seven above and I need seven below. So seven below, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going down to 11, but I'm actually going to cut a lot further than that. That's just where I'm going to cut horizontally, and then I'll take this horizontal piece, spin it, and attach it up here. And then same for the vertical. I have five. I need 14 and a half. Let's just round up to 16. I have five, so that's 11. That's not even. So I need about five and a half, we'll just say six on each side. And I can't get six on that side, but I can get six and come out to here. So again, I will cut approximately here, take this strip after this is pieced, and then sew it over here. Because this is a little square and I have to do the horizontal and vertical, I will have to do this twice. So let's get to cutting and piecing. I'm using my largest ruler and I'm making sure that I'm cutting it horizontally and vertically across and up and down so that there will be enough fabric for me to do the piecing that I need to do. If you didn't use enough stabilizer on the back for this big cut, you can always go back and add more stabilizer.
Now I'm going to cut the first strip. As I said earlier, I need about seven inches on each side of the logo. So I'm going to count seven inches down, make the cut, and then sew that piece to the top. This seven inches does allow for some wiggle room. Now I'll follow the same process with the other shirt. The logo on this shirt is centered horizontally, but I would like more of the blank shirt above the logo. So when I'm cutting it, the width I can cut true to what I will need in the final product, but I need more vertical length so that I can make a cut and bring it to the top. This logo is about nine inches tall. I need the final block to be 16 and a half inches. I'll round up to 17 just to give myself some wiggle room. 17 minus nine is eight. So it means I have eight extra inches. Split that in half, some of it on top, some on bottom. It means I need four extra inches. So I'm cutting this strip about four inches below the logo stopping. Now I'm going to sew that bottom strip onto the top to add more blank fabric above the logo. I'm using a normal quarter inch seam allowance and a normal stitch length to do this. If you have a hard time sewing fabric to fabric, even if it's stabilized, I recommend using a walking foot that will help the top layer move at the same speed as the bottom layer. You can iron the seam flat or use a seam roller to flatten it out and then follow the same process of measuring. It was four inches wide, I need about 14 and a half. That gives me about five or six inches on each side. This shirt just needed that one row brought up to the top, so now it's ready to be trimmed to size. Remember, when I did the piecing, I added in some extra inches to allow some wiggle room, so it makes sense that I'm gonna have to cut some inches off the top and the bottom, and then clean up the sides. This shirt looks a little disjointed. It's because of where the stabilizer was on the back and I wanted to make sure I was piecing in those stabilized sections, but it doesn't matter because I knew I would be trimming away the excess. So here I am measuring out what I need to keep and what I don't need. And then I'm going to cut it to size. Now my logos are centered and these blocks are ready to be sewn into the quilt top. Now the quilt is finished, so let's take a closer look at those centered blocks. If you're worried about that seam, you don't really see it once it's quilted. It is not noticeable. And if you're wondering if you should always do this, you can see here are two blocks that I didn't center because it just didn't make sense for the, the small amount that it would need. And they look great, especially after being quilted. Thank you for watching this video on centering the decal within the quilt block. I hope this video helps you the next time you need to center a logo on a quilt block. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share it with your friends. Thanks and see you in the next video.